here we have the sociology examiner explaining to you exactly how to get an A star in your A level sociology. So, Gemma, who's written all of our predictive papers this year, and I will walk through for them, explains to you the common mistakes that she sees students making, how to avoid them, and then her top 10 tips on how to get that A star in sociology. Here are my top 10 tips for getting an A star in AQA A level sociology. Number one, know your theory across the whole course. Even if the question does not specifically ask you to apply theory, you should still try to. And you absolutely need to understand functionalist, Marxist and feminist perspectives for almost every topic you study. Number two, Litter every answer with key sociological concepts. The examiner will be looking for these concepts in order to be able to award you marks. And by the time you've finished writing your answer, it should be really hard for a non-specialist to understand. And don't forget, that's vital for research methods too. Number three, apply real world contemporary examples wherever possible. Make sure you keep an eye out on the news or media right up until the day of your exam. Examiners will absolutely love any real life contemporary examples you can apply to theory. Number four, always think synoptically. This means taking sociological ideas and applying them across the whole of your A-level. So, for example, don't be afraid to apply ideas you've learned in education to crime if it's appropriate or ideas you might have learnt about from families to the belief side of the course. And that is actually a really easy way to cut down on some of your revision time, but just make sure if you do this in the exam, you stay totally focused on the question. Number five, allocate 15 minutes for every 10 marks available on all papers and topics. This includes any time spent reading items, and really does mean that timing is tight on all papers. So you have to stick to this rule throughout. You need to think smartly and write quickly. And examiners reports often reflect this in sociology, whereby the last questions on the exam paper are often half finished. So if you know you struggle with timing, it might be worthwhile ahead of the exam thinking about answering questions, particularly those longer essay questions, in a different order. Number six. Use the items effectively as a stimulus on the 20 and 30 mark questions. Unlike the 10 mark questions with an item where you absolutely have to apply ideas from the item directly in your answer, you do not have to do that with your 20 and 30 mark essays. However, I would still advise you to use the items as they do contain hints and clues about what the examiner is looking for and about some of the material that will appear on the mark scheme. So therefore use them as a way to check the essay that you are writing is exactly what examiners are looking for and you have interpreted what is often quite a tricky question in a sociology exam correctly. Number seven, when revising sociology, start by making a list of key concepts for each topic, then try applying sociologists or theory, and then finally apply evaluation. This will make sure that you are hitting all of your AO1 assessment criteria in the form of AO1, AO2 and AO3. Number eight, there are some themes that come up time and time again. So make sure you have a definition, examples and evaluation ready to go ahead of the exam. Examples of this include the changing position of women in society, the impact of globalisation and post-modernity. Number nine, when it comes to research methods, think about evaluating your pet. That means practical, ethical and theoretical advantages and disadvantages. And you need to think about that within your research methods in context answers and also your theory and methods answers. When starting revision for paper one and three, you really should ensure that you can do this confidently for each research method on the specification. Examples include questionnaires or participant observation. And finally, my 10th top tip is plan as many 30 mark questions for papers one and three and as many 20 mark questions for paper two as you can. This just really makes sure that you've already revised all the key content needed for the lower tariff questions too. 
So if that content comes up for a four, six or 10 marker, you will absolutely breeze it. Ouch. This is why in some videos I explain scratches.